Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna be setting up this XLR microphone by Toner and it's called the TC20 and we're gonna be connecting it to this XLR interface called the Scarlett Solo. Now, if you're not familiar with what an XLR microphone is, it's basically a microphone that takes these larger type adapters and you can't plug these into your computers because computers and laptops, they don't really have these XLR input. So you're going to have to get a dedicated uh, interface that does take XLR. Now the point of XLR connections and why people use them over USB connections is XLR has a higher amount of voltage that it could transfer and basically the more power you have going to your microphone the better the audio quality is going to sound. So without further ado let's get these two products set up and show you what the microphone audio quality sounds like and some of the differences between USB and XLR microphones. So we're going to start off with the toner and then move on to the Scarlett. So if we crack the toner box open this is gonna have a lot of accessories included. Now this isn't just a microphone setup, this is also like a kit. You're gonna get like all of these accessories. You're gonna have like this boom arm mount right here which is gonna be really handy and helpful to get the microphone as close as possible to your mouth which we'll be setting up in the video a little later. You're gonna get the microphone, of course, and this microphone does have the XLR output, which is gonna require a cable, which comes with this specific kit. So you're not gonna have to buy any accessories. If you do wanna switch to an XLR setup, all you do is buy this kit, as well as an XLR interface, and you're pretty much good to go. And then in here, you're gonna have this, um, shock mount which is going to help prevent any of the vibrations from entering into the microphone if you like accidentally bump into your desk so it's gonna kind of wiggle a little more because this thing has like rubber all over it so it really helps to diffuse those vibrations now if we take this piece off you can see that we have a pop filter the microphone cover which is going to help prevent from any of the puffy sounds coming in as well and some cable management straps as well as an XLR cable, which I took out already, but it was included in the box here. Now this is the interface and this thing is gonna have a pretty small form factor because it is the Solo and they have full size versions. And basically what that means is you're gonna have more XLR ports, but this one only has one. So when you actually look on the back of the box, you can see some basic instructions here and a few just directions on how to actually set it up. Now when you open the box, you're gonna have a little graphic here on how to set this thing up, but we'll be doing that on video. Now what's gonna be included is this little box right here, which we'll open in a second, and then of course the XLR interface. Now, if you look closely on this interface, you can see that we got a few different ports and dials and buttons that we can press here. So quickly running through it, this is where you plug your microphone into. These are adjusters for your microphone or instrument, and you can just change the characteristics of the volume. This is how loud your microphone is here. This port here is where you plug your instruments into. So if you have like a guitar or something you wanna plug in and play on your computer, you would plug that into this port here. And this was how you would adjust the volume of your instrument. And then this here is the monitor setting, which basically, if you wanna plug your headphones into this interface and hear what your voice or instrument sounds like, you can do that by plugging your headphones into this port here. Now, just one thing to keep in mind that if you are planning to plug your headphones into this interface, uh, you will need this little adapter piece that plugs into here and you can see it just clicks right in and then you can plug your headphones into there which is a regular AUX uh, cable jack adapter and these are pretty cheap you can get them for a few bucks online and then if we look on the back here you can see that we have a few different ports here as well you have um, it's two speaker outputs if you want to plug in a left and a right speaker, which is pretty cool if you like listening to your music throughout the room rather than headphones. And then here you have a USB-C port, which comes in the box here. And this port is going to be necessary. This cable is going to be necessary for you to connect it up to your computer. And if you look at the cable here, you see we have USB-C to regular USB-A. 
And what you do is you just connect it uh, down here into your computer and then you're pretty much good to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is connect the cable to the microphone and then to the interface. So there's two types of uh, ends. They're not the same on the XLR cables. You can see that there's a male and female. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna get the male and plug it into the microphone. Some microphones might be different, but it's gonna be pretty obvious when you're actually plugging it in. And all you do is you simply grab one piece and you just plug it in and you get that little click, at least with this setup here and you're pretty much good to go. So you are gonna have this cable dangling and I'd recommend wrapping it around the boom arm mount so you don't have all this cable on your desk. And then the second thing you're gonna do is connect the other end to the XLR interface. And this is a really easy, straightforward process. All you do is grab it and plug it in. And that's pretty much it. Now you have the XLR cable connected to the interface and the microphone. Now the next thing we're going to do is connect the uh, included cable that came with the interface to from the interface to the computer. And the cable simply just connects to the back of the interface and the USB port. Easy as that. And then you just connect the USB port to your computer. And one thing I'd like to note that is that if you have a MacBook Pro and you're using like a USB-C hub, it may not work because you need to get a USB-C cable that connects directly to the computer. For whatever reason, it might be this hub, but when I plug this into the hub, it doesn't detect the microphone quality. So I'm just gonna use a C to C cable rather than a USB-C to USB-A cable. And as you can see here, here I have my USB-C to C cable. If you are on Windows and you don't have like a hub, you sh this should be working fine. But if you are using a hub to plug in this interface, you may wanna test out a few different connections and cables just to make sure things uh, do work if you are having any issues. So the way to tell is if the microphone is successfully connected is you see this little green light going on and off and that's pretty much sound signal that's going into the mic. So if I tap the microphone, you can see that the signal's going. So now that we have this thing set up and ready to go, we see the screen light blinking. We're ready to do a microphone audio quality test and it should work right off the bat when you plug this into your computer. So once you have the microphone connected to the interface and the screen light is glowing when you tap on it or speak, what you do is you go to your settings, then you go to sound, and you're gonna see that we now have the option to select the Scarlet. So right now I'm speaking on a regular USB microphone, and this is what the audio quality sounds like. So here we are, roughly like half a foot away, and this is what the quality sounds like. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Now if we switch to the Scarlett microphone, here's what it sounds like. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Now both of these microphones are roughly the same distance away from me, and as you can tell, there's not too big of a difference. The real difference maker with all of this is probably the boom arm mount, when you get it really close to your mouth, especially when you're sitting at a desk setup. So if I get really close up to it, like with my mouth probably two inches away, you can see that the audio quality is significantly better than if I were to have it at a distance. So it's not really the XLR that's making a massive difference. It's mainly the distance between the microphone and my mouth. So there we have it. We connected this microphone kit to the interface and surprisingly there wasn't too big of a difference with the audio quality. Now a part of that might be because this microphone wasn't exactly a high-end microphone. This whole kit cost under $100 and you're getting the boom bar mount, the pop filter shock mount, and after all is left and said and done, basically this microphone is probably going to cost you roughly $40 if you were gonna exclude all of the accessories. 
So if you are using a more expensive XLR microphone, you probably will notice a difference. So with all that being said, if you are looking for an interface, I could highly recommend this one. However, with an XLR microphone, I can't really recommend this one. So I would probably go with a USB microphone if your budget is indeed under $100. And speaking of USB microphones, if you want to see my video on the one I did with the test, I'm going to leave that down in the description below, along with Amazon links on where you can purchase all of the mics and this interface that I used in this video. So be sure to check those out on Amazon. If you like this video, don't forget to click that like button and don't forget to leave your comments down below as well with some feedback or just your overall thoughts on the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.